Welcome back to the Complete Beginner's Guide to Mandolin. My name is David as always, and this is part six. In this video lesson, I'm gonna show you how to play some double stops and some open drone strings to help flesh out a melody. If you've never heard that term double stop before, it's a term that we use for mandolin, for violin, for guitar, and it basically just means that we're playing two notes at once. I think that phrase comes from stopping the strings in two different places on the mandolin neck. But an easy way to get started on double stops here is just to use open strings to help flesh out the sound. You can do something like this, like just play your open A and open E strings ringing out together. So let's try applying our right hand to that open A string, open E string double stop. And this can be a little bit tricky at first because we wanna keep our right hand alternating the exact same way we've been talking about in all these other lessons. So try out this exercise. See if you can do your downstrokes on all four beats for one measure. And then do eighth notes where you're alternating down and up. There's kind of a happy balance here because you don't want to go too far and accidentally hit strings that you don't mean to hit. You don't want to go not far enough and only hit one set of strings, right? All right, now let's try playing your middle finger on the fourth fret of the A string and keep your open E string ringing out. So this is also a double stop, but now we're applying our left hand here too. Let's try that same right hand exercise with this double stop shape now. So for those eighth notes, we wanna make sure that we're playing both sets of strings on the downs and the ups. All right, let's try this out over our open D and open A strings now. And this is a little bit more challenging because now we have open strings on either side of the double stop that we don't wanna hit, right? We just wanna play the open D and the open A. Let's try out this exercise as well. All right, one more here, check this out. What if we play our second fret with our index finger on the D string here? We'll keep that open A ringing out. Now we have a new double stop shape. Try out that same exercise here as well. All right, now we're gonna check out an arrangement of a song that uses all these double stop shapes and gets our right hand in the game as well. Like I mentioned before, we're gonna check out a classic bluegrass song called The Worried Man Blues. This comes from the Carter Family Catalog, and you can hear this at slow jams and bluegrass circles worldwide. So let's take a listen to the song and see what's going on. A one, two, three, four. All right, let's come over to the transcription now and check out a few things about this song. And if you don't have it already, you can grab that 50 page companion ebook to go along with these lessons over on my Patreon page. That book is available to all patron level tiers. And if you want to, you can even grab the play along backing tracks for this song and all the songs we'll be looking at together here. So check it out if you want. If you've already got that book, here we're on page 18 and we're gonna check out a few things first before trying out these double stops. And when coming to a song like this for the first time, I usually like to start off by learning the chords because the chords are really the most important thing that allows us to play with other people, right? So above the tab in the standard notation here, you can see our chords and you see we have three different chord letters here. We have an A, a D, and an E. So let's review those three shapes really quick. First, our A chord, right? Here we have the second fret on the G string, the second fret on the D string, open A and open E. Next up, our D chord, right? Remember this is second fret on the G string, open D, open A, second fret on the E string. And last up, we have this E chord. Remember, we have our middle finger on the fourth fret of the G string, and then we're barring down with our index finger on the second fret for the D and the A with an open E ringing out at the end there. And for this song, we're actually gonna come back to that first drum pattern that we learned for Moonshine, right? Remember, it's down, down, up, down, down. So check out the transcription here. The first line, we have four measures of A. So we're gonna do this drum pattern four times, right? The next line we have three measures of D, so we're gonna do three strum patterns on our D, followed by one measure of A here, so one more strum pattern on the A to finish out this line. The 
The next line we have four more measures of A, so we'll do four strum patterns on the A chord again. And then the last line we have two measures of E, so two strum patterns there, followed by two strum patterns on our A chord for those last two measures. Check that out. All right, now let's try out the whole progression from start to finish with the backing track so we can feel it all together. A one, two, three, four. All right, next up, before we try out those double stops, I think it's really important to know a really basic single note version of the melody. That way you can see where the melody notes are and try to make those be the most important part of the arrangement. And the melody is the most important part of the song, right? So we wanna make sure that we're playing it correctly first before we do anything to change it up. So let's come back over to that transcription now and check out the tablature on page 18. And right from the start, you can see that we're using the exact same strum pattern rhythm to play the single note melody now. Now we're just using it for a single set of strings like this. Not too bad, right? We just wanna make sure that we're using the pick directions down, down, up, down, down for every measure, no exception, no matter what string we're playing on. And one more thing about the transcription here, you'll notice that we have one solitary quarter note here at the beginning of the song before the first full measure. This is what we call a pickup measure. A pickup measure is just a partial measure that leads into the first beat of the song to set things up. And that pickup measure can be different lengths too, so you really have to key into what's going on here. If you check it out, we're still in 4-4 time, and you remember the quarter note gets the beat in 4-4 time. So this pickup measure just has one quarter note or one beat of time before we start that first full measure. So we'll have this one beat pickup to the melody and the beginning will sound something like this. A one, two, three, four. But other than that, this song is pretty straightforward. Let's just walk through this melody phrase by phrase and check it out. So here's that first phrase of the melody again. We're only using these two fingers so far. We have our index on the second fret of the D and the A string. And then we're gonna use our middle finger on the fourth fret of the D as well. Check this out. Nice, well here's the second phrase of the song. So here we're starting out with our middle finger on the fourth fret of the A string, walking down to the second fret of the A string, and then we have our open A at the end. So we start out with our middle finger on the fourth fret of the D string now. Now we're stretching up to the sixth fret of the D string with our ring finger, and then we end up on our open A string before coming back down to the fourth fret on the D again. Try it out with me. And here's the fourth phrase. We're starting out with our open A string, walking down to the fourth fret of the D string, to the second fret. Try that with me as well. All right, on the third line of the transcription here, you'll see that this is almost exactly the same as the beginning of the song. So you've got this down, no problem. Check this out. There's only one note that's different here in the entire line. Check out the very end. Here we have a sixth fret on our D string instead of our open A like we played before. So just watch out for that. So let's check out the last couple of phrases here too. We start out with our second fret on the A string with our index finger. We have one open A string there before hopping up to the fourth fret on our A string. Back down to the second. Open A, sixth fret on the D string before coming back to our open A string again. Let's try all that together as well. So 
So whenever you're ready, let's try playing through this whole thing with the backing track and the transcription on screen just to see what it feels like. A one, two, three, four. All right, coming over to page 19 of our PDF handbook now, and this is our drone string double stop arrangement of the melody. But the fun thing is, is that we're not gonna do anything different with our left hand. So, so all those melody notes are gonna stay the same. The only difference here is that whenever we're playing a melody note on our D string here, we're also gonna play through the open A string with our pick on both the downs and the upstrokes. Just like that. And same thing on the A string, right? Whenever we play a melody note on the A string, we're gonna play the open E string as well to let that ring out and fill out the sound even more. So this won't be too different for you since you already know the melody, right? Just spend some time fiddling around with the right hand, making sure those open strings are ringing out the way you want to. And whenever you're ready, let's come over to that backing track again and try this with the transcription on screen as well. A one, two, three, four. Nice work, folks. These open string double stops are a great way to fill out the sound of a song that you're working on, and I use them a lot. We're actually gonna check out a few other songs in this series where we'll use this technique as well. And if you wanna apply this technique to another song that you're working on, here's a really simple rule of thumb that you can use. Whenever you're playing a song in the key of A, like this arrangement of Worried Man Blues, the open A and the open E strings work really well, because if you think about it, our A chord uses both that open A and that open E like this. But those strings won't work for every song in every key, right? For instance, Moonshiner that we learned at the beginning of this series is in the key of G major, and whenever you're playing in the key of G, your open G string and your open D string work really well for drone double stop strings. It makes sense because those two strings are in our open G chord as well. And lastly, we're also gonna check out the key of D later on in this series, and for the key of D major, your open D and your open A work really well for drone strings. Again, because those strings are in our chord here. Now you can get a lot more technical about what strings to use over what chord in any of those keys, but we're not gonna get too much into those details. So just try this simple rule of thumb for now. And if you're unfamiliar with this idea of keys and key centers and songs being in certain keys and whatnot, don't worry, we're gonna talk a lot about that in an upcoming lesson here in the beginner series. So stay tuned. But coming up next in the beginner series here, we're gonna tackle another embellishment technique. For part seven, we'll be looking at the hammer on and how to use this technique over a classic fiddle tune called The Girl I Left Behind. Check it out here, and as always, likes and subscribes are much appreciated. Check out the Patreon page if you want to support the channel. Get those PDF copies of the transcriptions and the backing tracks. All sorts of goodies over there. But thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.